Hi everybody, Chris Petrie here. <clears throat> Thanks for stopping by and today we're going to do a little something uh, different. We're going to do some more uh, abstract style um, painting. This would be great for someone who maybe you're just starting out or um, perhaps you're um, maybe you know some some years of painting and doing art but you're not really let's say um, doing it all the time consistently but you still love to do it and um, um, maybe you're um, not so fond of like doing a lot of pencil drawings and things like that so this is kind of a fun way to enjoy watercolor uh, painting without maybe uh, having to do as much uh, detailed work with penciling or pens or inks or anything like that so more or less just sort of getting down an idea and then letting the painting and the watercolor paint and the fun of the medium just um, take over and um, I think it's a great way. Um, when I first started watercolor painting I did explore this a little bit and I, I really enjoyed it a lot because I, I, a lot of times I got uh, you know just uh, a little bit uh, discouraged if, I, if I, my pencil drawings weren't going too well and uh, sometimes I would find I would sit down and try to draw uh, a painting on a um, on a paper and uh, when I would do my drawing it wouldn't come out too well and then I I would tend to just scrap the whole project, the whole painting, let's say, because the pencil drawing didn't come out too good. So um, if you're working on your pencil drawing a lot, um, I say continue on that. I say always work 60% pencil drawing and drawing and 40% on painting because I think you, most artists will agree and be, you know, honest and say like they can always use a little more brushing up on their, their drawings, their drawing skills. So if you can go 60% drawing keeping your sketchbooks with you wherever you go and leave them in, leave a couple in your car and um, you know have them always around the house and things and your apartment wherever you live and you can always practice your drawing skills in just maybe 10 or 15 minutes here and there you know just drawing little small little you know ideas of maybe a piece of fruit or a flower or maybe drawing a pencil or a paintbrush or, or whatever you can do if you can do some pencil drawings um, along the way um, it's really great I think it really uh, enhances your artwork. So, does that make sense? Um, practicing uh, our drawing skills. I I'm going to definitely recommend everybody try to do at least, if you're going to take the watercolor um, approach and you're going to paint watercolors, definitely try to work on 60% of your time uh, pencil drawing or even using a pen, pen drawing, pencil drawing. Uh, charcoal or if you like to use um, there's different kinds of pencils you can get this is a peel off uh, pencil it's a, sort of like a crayon whatever you like to use but I say draw, draw a lot because drawing just enhances your artwork incredibly all right so let's get into it now this is here again a painting where we're basically going to not rely so much on our um, our skills with our pencil drawing but we do need those um, but we're going to just have more fun with the paint and the, and the water, watercolor. And, um, you know, and as well, this is a style you can paint in. This is a lot of, or quite a few people do paint in this type of style, of just more of an abstract style of things. Kind of like a lot less details and just more uh, the star of the show is the watercolor and paint, uh, the paint and the uh, water, and your watercolors. Okay, so again, our brush is a couple... Uh, flat brushes. These are natural hair brushes. And um, there's different varieties. So small, you know, small and medium size for this painting. And then a pencil just to do to sketch out our idea of our, um, we're going to do a, a boat scene. And, uh, you know, of course, plenty of fresh water. So we always um, Start off with a nice uh, pail of nice uh, fresh clean water, halfway filled, and so once you have these basic things, a couple of the square brushes, flat brushes, clean fresh water, pencil, and a, a palette with some paint. I have my uh, palette here. Uh, if you want to learn what my colors are for my palette and what we'll be using today, it's just simple. You just go to um, my Palette by Chris Petrie on YouTube. Um, or you can also email me at uh, chrispetrie at att.net. 
and I can send you actually a paper version of this, a uh, basically like a um, eight and a half by eleven, you know, um, PDF uh, file on my colors that I use and the way I set up my palette. And here I'll just put this to the side. I'm trying to get as much as I can in the picture here with my palette, so you can kind of see the mixing. And again, this is going to be more simple, um, abstract, but yet really fun and exciting to do. So basically the first thing I'm going to do is you can really take any subject matter you want. This could be a seagull, this could be a boat, this could be a house, uh, this could be a tree. Uh, so it could be anything you really want it to be. It could be a piece of fruit or a flower, whatever you want to do it. Uh, as far as your subject matter, that's fine. This is more or less the technique of, of how we're going to we're going to accomplish getting a real simple look with, with beautiful watercolor uh, paint. So here we go. Um, I'm going to do again a boat scene. So I'm going to look at my space divisions in my painting and I'm going to go maybe a, um, I'm going to go a third here, not even a third, this is a quarter, a quarter of the way up on the sheet. So if we're saying, if we broke this sheet down into quarters, half, quarter, quarter. So these would be quarters. You can break it down into thirds if you want. So you can break down your sheet any way you like. You can also break, uh, develop your sheet across this way too and do the same thing with halves and quarters. And that kind of helps you too when you're looking at a picture. Let's say you're working from a photograph or um, uh, you know anything else. You really you can sort of look at things and go, oh yeah, it's about halfway on the sheet, or that's about, or on the picture, or that's about three quarters of the way over. So you can kind of do your space divisions. So here I went with quarters. So the first quarter I'm going to make like a water line, and that's going to be the bottom of my boat. And then I'm going to say that a quarter of the way a quarter of the way is going to be the um, that's going to be the front of my boat and then I'm going to come down and do a nice boat shape like that and then I'll go across this way okay and so that's sort of the bottom of the boat and then we're going to go across this way then I'm going to come up And then what I'll do is I'll come around this way. And I'm using a picture for a reference. And we're going to come across this way. And So that's my kind of boat picture and uh, you know shape, and, and it doesn't have to be exact. Here I kind of I'm just I'm uh, I'm drawing from a reference photo, and then to make this really incredibly exciting, we're going to since this will be a boat and it'll be like light colors, like white and really light va tonal values. I'm going to in the, I'm going to follow my my picture, my photograph, and this will be a seawall over here. And here, what I'm trying to do is actually make some really good parallel lines. Parallel lines look really beautiful in paintings, and I think we can. Uh, We can use parallel lines to create a nice peaceful mood. So that's why I'm going with the parallel lines here across the, the uh, painting. Then we're going to use a dark shape of a um, distant um, building. This could be like a factory in the distance or a um, a warehouse, um, and there's some chimneys on the factory here, so we'll put those in the in 
And over here is maybe a, a shape of maybe a, a piling. All right, so here we have a really nice overall idea of what we're going to look to accomplish. A boat, a factory in the distance, which is, will be a dark shape, and then some water here, and then our boat. So what I can do now is, since I'm looking at this and it's a photograph or a picture more or less across from me, I have a workbook I'm using. Let's take a Okay, I'm going to take a um, scrap piece of paper here, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll do the same drawing really fast just to get my um, ideas of my tonal values. Quite a few artists do this before they create a painting. They'll do their drawing, and then they might take their paint and they might paint in black, uh, maybe using some black or some brown, and they might do like the tonal values of the painting. Uh, first, so they kind of like you have like a map of how they're going to do their their tonal values in their their painting. So here I'm going to do that. So I'm just going to do kind of the, just an overall sort of a, just a shape of things. Okay, so that's sort of. Somewhat of what we're looking. All right, we're looking at here. So let's take this. This is a crayon, a peel, sharpie peel, uh, peel off China marker, and we can just do like the tonal value. So here, this part is very dark, and we can also do this with paint. But this is just a little quicker for me right now. So I'm just going to do this overall. So that is sort of the tonal value of the um, pattern, for the most part, of the painting. So as you can see, I blocked out my darks. So I'm going to put this up across from me in the studio, right on my table. And this will just be a little bit of a guide for me so that I know that I need to keep this really dark. And then my darks are going to come through here along the boat, front of the boat. And then there's going to be a darker shade area under like a mirror, uh, a um, reflection underneath the boat in the water. This is going to stay light, the color of the water and sky. And then here this is all sky, which does have a light tonal value. So we'll put that in as light tonal value. So really, when I'm looking at this painting, there's just a few spots that are going to be just white paper. So what I want to do is, I'll just make a little W for where what stays white, just so I remember. So this is a W here, white, white there. There's a little bit of white here. And I think, so if I keep that in mind, I put the W where the white's going to be, white paper, so I don't want to put any paint whatsoever on that area. And then the rest is all blocked out for myself ahead of time, so I kind of know what my tonal value pattern is going to be when I, when I do this painting. Okay, so let's put this across from, us, across from us here in the studio. 
as a reference so we don't lose track of uh, our painting. The tonal values, that's always critical. And then we can get in and we'll start looking at our um, painting. So I'm going to get some water, fresh water. So I'm just going to take some fresh water and I'm just going to do a light coat of water on this paper just to put a nice even, just to wet the paper across the paper all the way down. Paper, the paper is going to buckle a little bit and I, that doesn't bother me. These are simple shapes that we have on this painting so we don't have to worry too much about the paper buckling. We can still paint and keep things straight and not have much of a problem because of the simplicity of the drawing. Alright, so we just got our paper moist and damp with some water. Again, now this is, you, you often hear me in my videos talk about um, painting techniques and this is glazing technique versus using the um, a la prima technique. A la prima technique, you would just start painting, painting and go right through the painting, uh, starting with probably the darker values first and middle dark values first, and then working through your painting, doing those values. And then after that, you, you, would, you would finish with the lighter values most times if you're going to do a la prima painting in watercolor. This is glazing technique. A lot of artists, watercolor artists, use this technique as well. And this is doing the light washes first and then slowly adding darker tones, tonal values, and colors on top of your first washes. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to mix up some cobalt blue. A little cerulean in there, maybe a, um, a little bit of burnt sienna. A little bit of, um, if you uh, add a little bit too much water, again I use some sponge next to my water pail to check some water off onto the sponge so I don't have too much water when I'm working. Uh, if you want to um, check out watercolor brush techniques, just type in Chris Petri um, brush techniques in your YouTube search bar and you'll see how I um, work with my brush techniques um, to avoid having problems with too much water or too little water on, on your uh, watercolor brush. So again, what, uh, using sponges is a great way to take some water off your brush as well as a um, napkin or a um, tissue or a paper towel. So we can use that technique. Okay, now before I start this I just want to take a little bit of the excess water off the bottom of the painting. My board that I'm working on and my paper, watercolor paper pad, is tipped just a little bit like this. It's maybe like on a little bit of an angle, so the water tends to drip down the page and collect at the bottom, so I wipe up the bottom of the page with uh, some tissue. And the page is still quite um, damp with water, and that's just going to look great when we start doing our washes. And again, we mixed up some cobalt blue. A little bit of uh, mineral violet, which is purple. In this painting, we're going to move pretty quick through here, so let's not fuss around too much. This is a painting that you really can complete in like five or ten minutes, if or you know, in that area. Um, so I'm going to keep um, keep these areas so I guess if we just go through this really. If you find you have a um, 
a little bit of uh, lizard and crimson here. Again, if you can change your colors just a little bit here and there, add a little bit of different colors, um, you'll find that it's going to be really uh, enjoyable visually. And then we're going to just take this, these same colors, cobalt blue, mineral violet, a little bit of cerulean blue, and a touch of uh, uh, yellow ochre. And we're just going to do the same thing. Now since, since we blocked out the areas that we said we were going to leave white, we, um, we've done that so we don't have to worry too much. And then if you find uh, a couple a couple uh, all right that's looking pretty good now I again I left those white colors where I said I was going to leave the, the light colors. So here we kind of we accomplished doing our first wash, leaving the light colors where the boat is, and then the white of the paper as well, uh, without any paint. We could also, I noticed there's some blue here, so I'm going to tie that through with the boat because there is a a portion of the boat that's got some blue and purple. So we can let that be as it is coming across the boat. And that's looking really fantastic. All right, so now we're going to do a little bit of um, just picking up some water along the bottom of the painting. Excess water that has dripped down and filtered down the watercolor paper. If you can imagine it's almost like a um, that little bit of uh, angle on the on my working table here um, creates a little bit of a um, situation where the water runs down the page a little bit which is good actually. Okay, now this is this is quite damp still, this paper, so we c could, we can blot out a couple areas if we want, that we see in our, in our photograph or our, our painting that we might be looking at in a workbook or whatever, so wh whatever you're working from. If you see some lighter areas that you maybe went over, maybe a little too dark, you can lift up a little bit of paint with a tissue, but I wouldn't do that too much. So I kind of see a couple spots that I might have, could have used a little less water. So I do a little bit of that. So I did a little bit of blotting here, but not too much. Sometimes I'll use uh, paper towels. So yeah, you can kind of get creative with your paper towels or tissues to lift up some paint. And I think that's pretty good. Now the exciting part of this painting is when we start doing the darks. So to speed up the process here, if you're at your uh, home studio, I would say let this dry naturally. You know, maybe take a half an hour break, 45 minute break. By that time, your painting will have dried, you know, quite a bit naturally, which is better. Uh, we don't want to sort, in essence, we really don't want to disturb the watercolor and what it's doing. It's slowly filtering down into the paper and making beautiful uh, looking, um, you know, uh, effects. So, but since we're creating a video here, you can speed the process up by using a little bit of a, a blow dryer and I'm going to try to do that. I have a heat gun here.
Okay, when I use a heat gun, I actually, I try to just really do it, you know, about a foot or two away from the paper, so I wouldn't hold the blow dryer or heat gun near the paper. I would keep it quite a bit far away, and just, you know, back and forth, and sort of almost like a breeze uh, letting this dry, almost in a natural way, like a breeze coming through, or if we were out in the hot sun, it would dry this fast. But I'm in the studio, so it is a little cooler in here. So it takes more time, and again, I would let this nat naturally dry. But since we're making the video, we want to sort of speed the process up a little bit. So now, just you can see a couple minutes of doing this little bit of blow drying on the paper, and it really dries it up nicely. So now it's probably just about damp, but enough that I can work on it, and it won't be a problem. There won't be much uh, bleeding or. Um, Blot balloons and things like that and water kind of sp spreading out all over. So let's uh, continue to work here and again if we use the method of going light to dark this first glaze we did was much lighter and now we're going to go and uh, we're going to do the middle middle and darker tones now and then you'll see the painting develop a really beautiful look. So we'll go in and we'll We're going to mix some, we can leave the uh, blue colors in our palette. That's not going to affect us at all. We'll do some uh, burnt sienna. Some burnt umber. Some alizarin crimson. Some sap green. French ultramarine blue. A little bit of mineral violet. French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, sap green, a little bit of iridium green. So I'm, I'm sort of just mixing the darker tonal values here. Okay, now I would say from there I'll start over here and Do a little more um, experimenting when I get the color that I think looks good. That looks pretty good. Again, we're not. Okay, I need a little bit of more, a little water. And I'm being very careful here to um, and I think what I'm going to do is Okay, I'm going to warm up these uh, so here working with the brush take your time I would say take take our time change the colors up a little bit I added a little more green there Okay, so we're having fun and we're 